The scripture today is John 20, 1 through 10. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and, did, and he believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have taken him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not recognize that it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told him that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. May the Lord add his blessing to our understanding of this reading. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You all look good this morning. <laughs> he is risen. Indeed he has. What a wonderful morning. So much running around going on. That's all right, because in our text there's going to be a lot of running going on. You've already heard that Mary was running. If you listen closely, you would have heard that both Peter and John were running also. One was trying to outrun the other. So when I saw the children running around for the Easter eggs and I saw the breakfast, everybody running for those good grits this morning and that sausage gravy, hmm. And then some of us were running down the driveway trying to put those ribbons up on those poles. You know, I have a new appreciation for pinatas now. I didn't know it was so hard to cut tissue paper. I spent most of yesterday praying and cutting tissue paper between praying and cutting tissue paper, praying and cutting tissue paper. But praise God, we are here. I want to say hello to all of those of you that are visiting with us today. Would all our visitors please stand? Any visitors that are here with us, please stand. Let's give them a hand and a warm welcome. So happy to have you this morning. Peace of God be with you today. You came on a great day. And of course, my family is here, my daughter and her family, and Ron and uh, my three grandsons are just back from spring break. And uh, all three of them are runners. So Connor is just back from Italy. Raise your hand, Connor. He was in Italy for a week. Uh, Kai, he ran in Georgia on spring break. And Caleb, he ran in the Nationals at New Balance in Boston. So 
we're proud of them and all the running they've been doing lately. But it's all good. To my virtual family out there, Facebook and Zoom, we greet you with Jesus' joy today. Our hearts are full. We're glad to be together. We're glad to see each other. But we're also glad to, that you are in spirit with us in this time and in this place. It's a wonderful resurrection morning. And some of us got up early, early, early. Because, uh, you know, I call it surprise at sunrise. That's what Easter is, surprise at sunrise. So we get up early in the morning, and Mary came in the dark to the tomb. So look, the stone is rolled away. Now, you know, on Good Friday service, I was sitting there, and I really had never noticed this before, and I was trying to figure out what was going to happen, and I had the idea that the stone was going to be rolled away, and I was sitting there trying to figure out, now, how does that mechanism work? And I'm uh, sorry I called it a contraption. I uh, didn't mean any harm <laughs> to anyone. I'm just not very mechanical myself. And I had just noticed it, and it just kind of bloated it out. I'm wondering how that's going to work, but thank you, Brother George. You showed us how you rolled the stone away. Isn't that beautiful? And then I like the fact that linens are prominent there. They're prominent in my sermon. He's not here. Look. He's risen. Look. The blood-stained cloth, it's folded and it's set aside. Look. The tomb is filled with light. He's risen. Let's go and tell others. No, let's run and tell others. I've spent some time in Korea on three different occasions, and once there were four women in the group, so the four of us kind of stayed together as we visited one of the famous prayer mountains there. And we were greatly moved by the view and what we encountered. As we ascended the mountain, the magnificent sculptures told the story of the life and death of Jesus. And we shouted for joy when we reached the top. For there on the top was the tomb. It was large enough for us to walk inside and walk around and see the grave cloths. And then when we came outside, when we looked to our right, there was a statue of Jesus standing there, hands uplifted. And then we looked to the left, and we saw a statue of the woman. Everybody said woman. The woman. Easter is about the woman getting there first. And the women carrying the word first. And the women were praying. And we just went to shouting. We like to never stop shouting up on top of that mountaintop. You see, it reminded us that the women were first at the tomb. And in John 20, thank you, Elder Darlene, for the reading of that scripture. Jesus reveals himself to his post-resurrection sister, Mary Magdalene. He tells her to tell her female friends, and he entrusts the single most important announcement in human history, the news of his resurrection, to a cadre of faithful women who alone had ventured in the dark to visit the tomb. These sisters were to tell the brothers that Jesus was alive. At first, the brothers dismissed it as an idle tale. But I'm also glad, glad for Peter and John, the God of surprises. You know, I say that every morning. I want God to surprise me. I say that every day. Because God always surprises me. I've learned my ways are not his ways. And God's going to show up in ways I did not anticipate. God showed up on Easter morning. He surprised everybody when he raised up his son, the one charged with blasphemy, the one who forgave those crucifying him, the one who welcomed one last sinner into his kingdom, the one who committed his spirit to the hands of a waiting father. The resurrection was, however, the biggest surprise of all final unexpected event. 
It started when Jesus came and he started talking about the last being first, the devastated being rebuilt, the poor and the oppressed, enriched and liberated. Hmm. Easter is a time of deep surprise, a surprise at sunrise. The sudden realization that God makes all things right in ways we never imagined. Can I say that again? God makes everything right in ways we could never imagine. Easter is a proclamation. All I need to say this morning is he has risen. Yeah, we greeted ourselves this morning. That is all we need to say, because that's what Easter is. It's a proclamation, a trumpet call of victory. What are we saying? We're saying the victory has been won. We're saying that the war between good and evil is over. The devil got defeated. Hallelujah. Now, some of the troops haven't gotten the message yet, so there may still be some battles and skirmishes here and there, but... It's over. The victory has been won. The clock has run down. The devil has been checkmated. And it's in this new space that we're living. The old is past. Behold, the new has come. And we are the new creatures. And why are we new creatures in Christ? Because we'll never die. What makes us new? Do you ever stop and think about that? We will never die. That's what Easter says. Our enemies, sin, curse, the devil, they are beaten and gone. Ultimately, they won't be able to start any more mischief. Yes, we can cease to fear all of them now. Easter is both a gift and a responsibility of having Christ dwell in us. So let us live our lives of service dedicated to justice. Because it's a wonderful thing that God has done for us and in us and with us, but he expects us to make the world better. If you have that joy and that strength and that power in you today, God wants you to put it to good use wherever you go. Yes, Mary seeing the empty tomb and the removed rock, runs. Everybody say run. Runs, the scripture said, to tell Peter and John, who run. Everybody say run. They run quickly to see what has happened. John, listen, boys, John outran Peter. But when he got to the tomb, the Bible said he waited till Peter came, because you know how John was young. John was a teenager. I think about how young these disciples are. John was a teenager. And so John waited till Peter came. And then Peter just pushed him out of the way. You know how Peter was. Hallelujah. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> yeah, John just stooped down. He looked into that tomb and he saw those linen wrappings. He saw the linen wrappings. But Peter, catching up, dashes into the tomb, looks for himself. Whole lot of running going on. Mary sees the tomb empty, and she is confused. She says, they have taken the Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. And when Peter views the linens, he is uncomprehending. He doesn't understand. But it's John, the beloved disciple, who first realizes that on the basis of an empty tomb, a world of stone, and burial clothes, a world of head wrap, he says the scriptures are fulfilled. And in our text, look at it carefully, John confesses he saw and he believed. See, we have to come to the point of belief. This is where our faith starts. And so this young teenage boy, see, sometimes young people can see more clearly than we can. Amen? Amen. The stone had been rolled away. They came to the garden tomb expecting to find the stone in place. 
They had already stumbled through a field of rocks on their spiritual pilgrimage to the Son of God. Such rocks as disbelief, misplaced enthusiasm, the rocks of worldly possessions and little faith, the rocks of a clouded understanding, confusion, and disappointment. But on Easter, like never before, we learned that God has shown enough in the rock removing business. <laughs> Hallelujah. Back when in my family, people worked in quarries, amen? So I know something about moving rocks. And I live in a place near a strawberry farm, but it was a quarry. Where my house sits, it was a quarry. That means the soil is not particularly good. But it makes me know that God can move a rock. God can move any rock. God can move any mountain. If God could roll that stone away, he can move the mountains out of your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, but we have to be careful. We just come from fasting and Lent and focusing on mental health and other dis disciplines, and, and we've looked at those little stones we've been carrying around. And we have to be careful, though, as we move away from Easter, that it, we don't let the rock get moved back in front of the tomb. Think about it. It's so easy. It's open on Easter. We can believe anything. We're open to everything. But it's so easy when life knocks you down to roll that stone back. Let it will roll on its own right back. It'll close you back in if you're not careful. Amen? Must be eating all that Easter candy. So watch out this afternoon. Somebody brought me. I have one person who brings me an Easter basket every Easter, and she brought it on Friday with all those goodies. I've been tempted. It's sitting right on my kitchen table. <laughs> but I was good. But watch out this afternoon. <laughs> I'm definitely going to take it into some candy. Amen. But I have to be careful. I have to be careful. We roll away the rocks of arrogance and difference and destructive habits. We rolled away the rocks of compulsive behavior and insecurity. We rolled away the rocks of narcissistic success and unforgiving spirits, fashionable worldliness. And those little stones we got from Ash Wednesday until Good Friday, we can put those stones away now. They were for Good Friday, but it's Easter now. And what we're saying, we put away. What do we put away? We put away hurt. We put away guilt. We put away shame. And we put away defeat. We made peace with those things now, amen? Easter is here, but just be careful not to slip back into old debilitating ways. Easter presence is seeing and hearing with our eyes and minds open. Someone said, I can see clearly now. The room is gone. You know what they like to say today? I'm woke. That's a popular thing people say now. I'm woke. Woke. I woke up. But Easter is so much more. It's running to tell others. It's bearing witness to all these things. When I left the Good Friday service, Friday night, it was so wonderful here. People from six different congregations, pastors from five different churches. I said to myself, thank God, the gospel of Jesus Christ was proclaimed at Bethany tonight. The gospel was proclaimed. You know how important that is? To tell the word, to speak the truth. Yes. And you know, Easter is like going out to your car and being surprised because you see your loved one that just passed away. Wow. To those of you that have lost loved ones recently, and even though my mom died over a year ago, it's still like it was yesterday. Imagine I could go out there to the car and see her alive. I had my mother on my mind a lot yesterday, all day yesterday. Because see, my mother had a mini resurrection in 2021. She had just returned home from the hospital the day 
before. On that day, they released her. We were agonizing over the fact the doctor said she couldn't live alone by herself anymore. The next morning, the caregiver found her in very bad condition. She was rushed back to the hospital. And the doctors and nurses advised me that further interventions were not advisable. Her kidneys, as well as other organs, had shut down. And that night, I slept in the hospital bed in her apartment, which was located on the grounds of the hospital. And in the middle of the night, I got another call from the hospital saying she might not make it through the night. And I've been praying all through this ordeal, and so I said, okay, if she takes a turn for the worst, call me, and I'll come right back over to the hospital. But praise God, my mother did not transition in July, not until September 24th, on the third day. Just like Jesus, her kidneys woke up. Hallelujah. Oh, I thought about Jesus' resurrection. Her body got up. At almost 95 years old, she was given three more months. It makes me think of that song. I'm going to wake, wake, wake up in glory. I'm going to wake up in glory by and by. There to tell redemption story. I'm going to wake up one day. Hallelujah. Because you see, Easter is still happening. You can rise today. Still we rise, my angel said. Still we rise. They talked about me, lied on me, attacked my integrity. A few tried to destroy my reputation. Oh, yeah. But still I rise. Because Easter is still happening. I talked to someone here today when the mom was here. And she said she had been so sick and she looked like put your health this morning at breakfast. And I said, You had a resurrection. Amen. Bethany, they counted us out, but God gave us a comeback. Amen. Can he do it? Can he do it? Uh, I know he can do it. Easter digging in the ground in a chilly October, rows and rows of tulip bulbs plotting a spring resurrection. Can he do it? Didn't they come up? Daffodils, for Cynthia. Amen. Easter can be a peace accord between Russia and Ukraine. Can he do it? Let's pray that he will. When I finish in the kitchen on my best days, I clean up around 7 to 8 p.m. I leave some clean dishes on the drain. I may leave some because it's just me and I use the same dishes over and over. What's the point of putting them away, really? But I always dry my flat layer because I don't like to see the water spots on them. You know, that can happen when you just leave them on the drain. The last thing I do in the kitchen is hang my towel across the oven door, and I take my other cloth, and I fold it neatly for the next day. You know, it's that miscellaneous cloth you use to wipe the counters off or whatever you need to dry anything. Mine are called bar towels. I bought a bunch of white ones many years ago. They are indestructible. So if you ever go to my house and get up early in the morning, you can look in my kitchen and tell what kind of day I had the day before. Yeah, you can tell by how the two clothes are positioned. If the tea towel is over the oven door, you know, that little handle, and if the bar towel is neatly folded and padded right there on the counter, you can say, the Lord's had a good day yesterday. <laughs> now on a bad day, and you look at my kitchen, they just be balled up somewhere, thrown <laughs> somewhere. I just ran out of energy on that day. Uh, I finished the day well when I dry when I dry my flat when I carefully fold that other cloth. We have these little rituals, and so did the people in Jesus' day. Well, during Jesus' time, there was a special way in which the carpenter let the contractor know that his job was done. On a hot afternoon in Galilee, 
Jesus had just finished a job he had been working on for several days. The hair of his strong forearms matted with sawdust and sweat. His face shiny with heat. He takes a final welcome drink so cool from a leather bag that he steps aside and he pours the water on his face and chest. That he wipes his face clean. That he pats his face and his arms dry. And then finally, the last thing he does, he folds that towel neatly in half. Then he folds it again, and he sets it on his finished work, and he walks away. Now, whoever arrives to inspect the work when they see that towel, they understand. That towel is a simple message. The work is finished. The work is finished. For three years, Jesus has set aside his carpenter tools. But really? One morning, on a sorrowful Sunday morning, Peter and John crouched down, looked at an empty tomb, and saw the linens that the risen Lord had left behind. There you are. You can see them. Look at them. And when you see them, what do you see? And a smile came over Peter and John's face as their sorrow is replaced with your right hope. For they saw the cloth that had covered Jesus' head. Now you know they put thorns on his head and he was blue, blood stained. It was blood stained, but it was carefully rolled. Well, one gospel said, as you read this one, it was folded carefully. And when they saw that, they understood. He did what he said he was going to do. He's gone. He's won the victory for all of us. He has won the victory. Thank you, Jesus, for a job well done. Thank you that you didn't start and not finish. Thank you that you rose. Thank you. And to this congregation and to everybody everywhere, tell it from the mountaintop. Tell it with joyful voice. The stone is rolled away. <laughs> the tomb is empty. And the two linen cloths are there. He left behind, including his bloodstained head wrap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know what I see when I see that. Linen's there. I see new life. Hallelujah. When I see the linen's there, I see eternal life. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I end with this wonderful song, Lionel Harris and Patty. Sandy Patty made it so popular and sung it for 38 years now. But I think the Gaithers had a hand in writing these lyrics, but I love them. They knew he was dead. It is finished, he said. We had watched as his life ebbed away. Then we all stood around till the gods took him down. Joseph begged for his body that day. It was late afternoon when we got to the tomb, wrapped his body and sealed up the grave. So I know how you feel. His death was so real. But please listen to what I say. It was his voice Mary heard. Those kind, gentle words, asking what her reason for her tears. And she sobbed in despair. My Lord is not there. He said, child, it is I. I am here. I'm just seeing Jesus. I tell you, he's alive. I've just seen Jesus, our precious Lord alive. And I knew he really saw me too. As if to me, I've never lived. And all that I'd ever done before, it won't matter anymore. Because I've just seen Jesus, and I'll never be the same again. 
Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Now this is a part of the service where you can come forward if you want to join Bethany Christian Church. You can come forward if you want to confess Christ. If you just believe, all he says is just believe that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. If you believe and you're not in a church community being nurtured and hearing this gospel and keeping that stone rolled away in your life, come forward. If you want to rededicate yourself to Christian discipleship or if you just want a word of prayer, if God has touched your heart, if Jesus is right here with you now, and you want that special blessing, won't you come forward at this time? God bless you. Let us stand and sing as you come forward. God bless you. I love you, Sister Brenda. Amen. Amen. Just come on. Is there another? Is there another? Sister Brenda has been coming here since Ash Wednesday. I never forget the first night you walked in here. It was dark. Yes. <laughs> it was almost empty in here. <laughs> and I praise God for you. You want to say anything? You don't have to. No. She, she speaks beautifully, but <laughs> we understand. So we ask her to join us uh, to greet you after service. We are so happy to have you. Thank you. Bethany Thanks. needs you. I'm happy to be here because Everybody that I have met have been so welcoming and putting their arms around me and hugging me and welcoming me, and it feels like a family, and um, I'm glad I have this family. I lost my husband a year ago. I felt a little lost, and I said, I've got to find a church that I feel comfortable in, and this church has welcomed me so much, and I sometimes sit there and cry because it's so beautiful. So... Love you all. Let's sing that last verse. God bless you. So now we leave this space of worship. And while so much of the road ahead is uncertain, the path constantly changing, we know some things that are as solid and sure as the ground beneath our feet and the sky above our heads. We know God is love. We know Christ's light endures. We know the Holy Spirit is here, found in the space between all things, closer to us than our next breath, binding us to each other until we meet again, go in peace. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen.